All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you from a particularly hot San Diego today. And I'm delighted to be joined from New York City by Joya Das. How are you doing, Joya? John, it's nice to see you. It's actually cooling off here in New York City. Last week it was in the 80s, but it's starting to cool off and I'm wearing boots today for the first time. Oh, wow, yeah. Well, I'm definitely not because <laughs> San Diego, we have a heat advisory. It's up in its 96, 98 outside, which is unusual. It's not normally that hot here. Um, so, But you don't a, sound like you're from San Diego. Where are you from? No, I'm, I'm from Ireland originally. So, um, you know, I, I, I would obviously prefer 96 degree weather than 365 <laughs> days of rain. <laughs> I had a boyfriend for a long time from Galway. Oh, okay. That's on the west. I'm from the east coast in Dublin. Yeah, Galway's okay. lovely. Galway's great. Yeah. yeah, I would like go to the west of Ireland whenever I'm home if I can. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, um, Joya, you started an organization called Lady Drinks, which is a community leadership group for South Asian, Southeast Asian leaders. And so, tell me a little bit about why you founded this in the first place, and then we'll talk about what you guys do. So the company is really founded out of a personal pain point. Um, mm -hmm. I knew from a very young age, about four years old, that I wanted to become a television anchor. And when I announced that, especially as a girl to my mm -hmm. Indian immigrant parents, I don't right. think it was something they could get behind emotionally and it wasn't something they could get behind financially. So I paid mm -hmm. for college. I left at 18. I paid for college. I paid for grad school. I paid for every move around the country to come to New York City and be a business news anchor for the last 20 years. But uh, more pertinently to your question, at the 10 year mark of my career, I realized that I may not be the only Indian girl had, that had the odds stacked against her this way. So how could I start to build support systems for other women, much in the way that I built them for myself, but how can I just get folks there faster? So I really took the dynamic of interviewing CEOs and titans of business and leaders and thought leaders out from behind the TV screen, moved it in front of a live audience to create teaching moments. But then I would curate the room at these events. And um, my hope and my mission was always that after you got some learning from somebody who was already successful in business, mm -hmm. is that you would cherry pick from the room who becomes your support system for success. So that was eight years ago. I've now left television to run this movement full time with a view to expand both nationally and internationally. Of course, that got stymied as of the pandemic. Sure. My last live event was March 3rd in London, but I just moved everything to virtual because at the end of the mm -hmm. day, I'm in the connections business. So yes. that's the strategic, the tactical, and how I do it is really, um, is really just that. So what is the, what's, what's the first step in somebody? I mean, say, for instance, you, know, you said with your background and culturally or whatever that your you know your parents and your ambition you know were out of sync you know for for a lot of you know obvious reasons and that um really good reasons at the time um, from their perspective so how do you help people who maybe are in a similar position to you where there's a there's a cultural and an expectation dynamic that's working against them i think the biggest thing that i see now that i'm eight years in is that women lack access they lack a voice and they lack the courage to ask for help. So I have a membership driven platform. All of my members meet in industry specific cohorts throughout the week. And in those mastermind calls, that's an opportunity for somebody to ask, you know, I don't know how to price this, or mm -hmm. I'm not sure that this is direction I need to take with my social media, or I need a tax attorney, right? So this is a space of well-networked, well-resourced women that you can actually ask that question to. And somebody, either myself or somebody else, is going to be able to come back and give you that contact that you need in order to be successful. But I think just naturally, I don't know that we had that uh, growing up or even were taught that. Maybe men are, but I don't know that the women are. Yeah, I think that's a, I, I think that's a good point because somebody interestingly mentioned to me the other day because I was... I was talking about my own, um, you know, career path and how interesting it had been in the end because, you know, I moved around a few different things. And to be honest, you know, at times I, I just went for things that I probably wasn't qualified for. And, and, and this person, she said that that was an interesting message for women because sometimes like women would look at a job description and say, Ooh, there's 10 requirements and I only have five or six, you know, I'm not sure whether I can go for it. You know, whereas, you know, sometimes men or myself, I'd go, 
kind of have one. I'll give it a go. Yeah. And, right? and she was saying that was an important, an important message for, you know, especially for women, like to put, just to put themselves out there and really just take chances. I mean, I just had this conversation this morning with my creatives group that meets on Thursday mornings at nine. One of them is a comedian and the other one, I believe, is a graphic design artist. And her publisher has come back with a slew of edits. And she's like, this just doesn't feel right to me. Like, mm -hmm. I put so much of myself in this and I really just need a sounding board right now because this doesn't feel right. And the comedian who's written a screenplay and now has it optioned was like, then push back. You have every right in the world to protect what it is that you've done and to stand in your power and push back. And by the way, they're gonna respect you at the end of the day. But she needed to hear that from somebody else who had done it as opposed to just sitting mm -hmm. in her office day in and day out wondering, right? And then she wanted a sounding board. She's like, I want somebody else that I could talk to that specializes in children's picture books to look at these edits and tell me if they're of sound mind. So, you know, that's, that's my work between now and tomorrow to reach out to all my authors and see if I can find somebody that can be that. But at least she had, she got it off her chest. She found, mm -hmm. she got a qualified answer. Yeah. And I think that's, and I think that's so uh, incredibly important because it's like, I mean, we were talking beforehand, like I grew up, grew up in Ireland, right? Um, and, and my parents' generation, for instance, you know, you got a doctor and then you never questioned whether that doctor was good, qualified or whatever. Yeah. It was just, you know, you believed everything the doctor said, right? Yeah. And it's not until you get older that you realize, you know, that just because somebody is qualified and is an expert doesn't mean that, number one, they're right for you, or number two, that they're right at all. And more importantly, the, I, 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 I failed to mention this part. She was like, a guy would never, ever not stand his ground and push back. Mm -hmm. But we as women will, will ask ourselves a hundred times, oh, should I, should I not? Am I, being, am I not being nice? Will they not like me? Will they not publish my book now because I pushed back? But men would never do that. Men never do that. Yeah. Yeah, no, and 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 it's a it's a very good point. Um, you know, that obviously we have the we have a bluffer's gene too. So, uh. <laughs> but it's, listen, it's also no, nur nature versus nurture. Of we're just course, raised yeah, differently, and then yes. you you take into consideration we're South Asian women. You know, pull pull it back like fifteen more years mm -hmm. because we're supposed to be seen and not heard. We're supposed to be succeeding in the home, not outside the home. So there's the number of women that are realizing um, senior level positions, CEO level positions is really just like my generation and the next one right like this is new territory for us and we definitely need a support system that may not be our family that may not be our social circle that tells us that we can do this but by the way here's how yeah and, and i love that because obviously what you just said there is uh you know it may not be a family it may not be your you know community that you come out your social circle or whatever but having a, a, a company like yours having access to people who can give you really good information and are looking at it in a in a shall we say a more dispassionate way and then clear away and they've done it themselves i mean that's got to be incredibly powerful what i think also is powerful is that i'm really catering to a very niche audience and people mm -hmm. will say to me oh why is it just south asian i'm not south asian i'm like look you yeah. can come i have plenty of non-south asian folks that are members but what I don't want to have to do is essentially mansplain why certain things are happening. You know, I've leveled the playing field that we can look across the table from each other. And when you say your mother-in-law's moved in, nobody bats an eyelash because we get that that's culturally accepted, right? But like yeah. to a Western lens, that might just be like, you know, force you to jump off a ledge. Um, yeah, no, exactly. I, I see that. And that's, that's interesting. And I do think, and I do think that, you know, sometimes people, you know, there's so many nuances, especially culturally. I mean, there's so many nuances at times that are really hard for other people, you know, to understand. And, and you know, I've seen that myself here, um, you know, coming from my background, there are certain cultural nuances of, of, of Ireland that other people don't understand um, readily. And therefore, I think being with people who do understand the cultural nuances, I think that obviously adds another layer of richness to the interactions. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, so tell me, um, tell me a little bit about uh, maybe some of the, when you first set this up, right, um, I mean, you, I presume you started doing it kind of um, organically at the beginning, and then you turned it into a real, a real business, but, uh, you know, what were some of the key elements that you saw were needed or were missing? So, you know, I was running Lady Drinks as a side hustle for mm -hmm. the better part of seven years. It was truly born as a business development exercise to bring women together to network each month because I had right. a production company on the side. And 
uh, what I didn't realize that when we first started hosting events, I'd been hiding behind the TV screen this entire time. I didn't realize an entire generation of women had grown up watching me on TV at a time that no Indian women were on mainstream television, like a major mm -hmm. network like CNN. And so all of a sudden, 300 women, Indian women, were showing up to my events for the first couple ones. And I had no idea. I was overwhelmed, just didn't even expect this. And finally, it was like, well, Clearly, I'm in a place of responsibility, whether I like this or not. I have access to so many people that are successful in business. Why don't I start to connect the dots? Why don't I start to, you know, use this access and leverage it to pay it forward? So um, I would say that when I made the final leap to go and do this full time, I did make sure I put some systems and processes in place. Mm -hmm. I got a business coach. I got a branding coach. I got a communications coach. Why? I wanted a cadre of people that were accountable to me anytime I had a question and would answer and not be like, well, I'll get back to you in a week, right? Like I need right, an answer right. now. Yeah. And so I needed to put those systems and processes in place. And then with my business coach, I also launched a formal membership, which gave me the financial runway to be able to jump off the cliff and say, I was going to do this full time, but I wouldn't ever recommend doing this without, um, well, a trust fund or <laughs> which I don't have, but yeah. like, or just doing it where you've built in, you've built in a sound um, sort of, you know, net for yourself when you decided to finally mm -hmm. make the leap. Um, beyond that, I would say that like, you got to network, you network to get work, right? Like, right. I don't know that a day does not go by, like even you and I talking right now, this is networking. I've never met you before. Mm -hmm. This is a great sure. opportunity to get to learn about each other. That I don't think that you can as an entrepreneur afford not to network. And I am shocked shocked at the number of women that just don't even see the merits in it. They don't see the need to do it. And I couldn't imagine mm -hmm. a day without it. Um, I guess that would be my two biggest takeaways from being an entrepreneur now for however long I've been, eight years. Yeah. And it's interesting too, is now with networking, say because of uh, COVID and the pandemic, you know, obviously there's a lot more networking going on digitally, a lot more uh, online and through things like, you know, what we're doing here, Zoom. And it's interesting because, I mean, we with our company have been, um, operating virtually for a long time and we did it for for strategic reasons way back and it's it's paid dividends lately because obviously we didn't have to reconfigure anything but I do think it has opened a world to people where they realize that it's actually a great way to network and to get in front of people in a quite an efficient way and you can actually um, develop quite strong relationships with people who you've never met in the flesh. And it, it levels the playing field that anybody yeah. across the country now can come to my events. I just did a virtual wine tasting on Friday and I had people oh. from California to Chicago to New York to DC all on the same you know, platform doing this wine tasting. I mean, of course, the impetus behind it was networking, but I don't know that I could have done that in pre-COVID times when I was just doing events in Nashville. I was just doing an event sure. in Houston. I was just doing an event in DC. You know, now I can really bring a melange of women together that wouldn't have met otherwise. And so did everybody have the same bottles of wine, was it? And they were? Yeah. So the business model for that is I partner up with a vinter. We set, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's a set price for X amount of bottles. The minute you confirm the wine gets FedEx to you and you already know the day that we're going to be doing this. So we all get together on a Zoom call and the vinter takes you through the um, tasting. Yeah. But I make an ex I'm a fierce moderator. It's my training as a journalist. Sure. And so I make sure that everybody in the Zoom call gets to ask somebody else a question and gets to introduce themselves. So it's not just the Vinter talking to you for an hour. Yeah. Now, I noticed there's um, some of what you when you were doing your events. I mean, you you didn't just do like networking events and stuff. I mean, you did you had things like, well, it's a wine masterclass with Sotheby's backstage tour, the Lincoln Center before the Nutcracker, um, things yeah. like that. How I did important, a skydiving retreat. <laughs> yeah, I saw, I actually saw that too, a skydiving retreat. How important are those elements in, in maybe breaking the ice? And also maybe, um, you know, skydiving, I'm sure that probably some people did something that they never believed they would do. So the thing is with the skydiving, every year I do one sort of extreme sporting event. And the impetus behind that is that I want to push you so far outside of your comfort zone mm -hmm. that you enter that zone of optimal productivity, right? Like I want to under, I want you to understand what else is possible for you because you want to break through this, like this barrier that you have with yourself. So, I mean, skydiving was an extreme one, but the first year we, you know, we hiked the Grand Tetons. Um, yeah. We've done 
um, trapeze school on the West Side Highway. I'm now in talks with Porsche to see how we can do a day at the racetrack in spring 2021. But, you know, I really use that as a metaphor to just push people out of their comfort zone. And I'm curious to see who's going to show up. You know what I mean? Like we weren't raised to be this bold and daring. And so I'm always curious to see who shows up. But at the end of the day, again, I'm in the connections business. Yeah. That's strategic. Tactical is like I create all different kinds of things because I'm interested to see who's, who, what resonates with what. Not everything is going to be everybody's cup of tea, but at least it keeps the pipeline of people coming in the door and potentially becoming members. Yeah, and what I love about it is that it eventually, I mean, you have the one-on-one -on -one coaching and things, and, event, and I think it's what you mentioned earlier, and I think this is a critical point for people to take away, is when you started your business, you went and got a bunch of experts to help you. Mm -hmm. And I, and this has been one of the things that I, have, I preach for a long time here is uh, you know, we spend a lot of money on our hobbies. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll, no problem going out and getting, a, I mean, if you're into golf, no, no problem paying money to a golf pro to teach you, to help you swing. But very few people will pay money to help them with the thing that puts bread on their table. Yeah. And what, are the, what do you think that block is about? Um, I, that's a really good, I mean, I've been thinking about this for a long time. I'll tell you, when I first, when I got my first executive level job, I really wanted it and I was on the executive team for the first time and I was really excited and then I was like, okay, I don't really know what to do next and I went out and I hired a coach and it's the best thing and, and the, co the first thing the coach did with me was she asked me, um, she goes, so you want to be a VP, is that's what you want to do, you just want to be on executive teams and I said, yeah, and she goes, are you sure that's all you want to do? Mm -hmm. And then I said, well, I kind of think I could do the CEO job. And she says, okay, so you want to be a CEO. So let's start there. And she okay. helped me and I did. And I was CEO of a couple of companies later. Um, I think, I, I, I don't know. Uh, it's a really good question. I think it has a lot to do with, um, no, well, two things. I think number one, sometimes people sit back and expect the company to invest in them, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like, and then the second thing, I think it's, it's, Work, be, work, people have a very kind of, I think, a privacy around their work and what they do. And there's a vulnerability there. And maybe they're afraid to go out and bring somebody else in because it's maybe they think it's admitting to the world that I, I'm not able to do my job, which but of I course is silly. I think that's all the more reason to hire a coach, yeah. right? Because then what's the alternative? You're sitting at the water cooler having conversations with people that aren't even qualified to tell you how you, what you need to cultivate or what you need to do to become CEO, right? Like you're yeah. paying somebody who's going to take an objective view and look at you and say, I think you need to cultivate a little more grace under pressure, or I think you mm -hmm. need to go take a public speaking class. <laughs> I think you need to be able to learn to meditate because you are way too emotional. You know, like who's going to look at you objectively and tell you that? They're not. Yeah, so if there's, I mean, I, I don't know what insights you have on that, because I'll tell you, that is the thing that, that really baffles me. I don't know why more people don't do it. I am really almost clinical and unapologetic about who I want as a member and who I want at mm -hmm. my events. I'm doing a hike in Philadelphia this next, this coming Saturday. And I want the women who are going to come there to be well networked, to be well spoken. And I want them to be an executive or a founder. But here's the other piece is that I want you to show me that you have a track record of investing in yourself. Because if yeah. you don't, you don't want to be part of this group. Like you don't, you know what I mean? Like you're not going to understand what I'm up to in the world. So it's, it's something that I've learned over time, but I think it's, you can't underestimate that. Like if you don't come to the table with that ethos, like you, you have to be ready for it. And if you don't, if you're not ready for it, you're not going to hear anything I'm saying. Mm -hmm. And the reality is when you look at investments, whether it's joining your group or whether it's like getting an executive coach or, or even for goodness sake, paying a professional to do your resume for you, the investment is against maybe the earnings and stuff. Throughout your, it's, it's actually quite small. Yeah. I mean, it's quite small and insignificant, but the return on it can be massive. Well, I just don't think that you need to make the process any more painful, right? Like I'm not the yeah. first person to go out and decide that I'm going to start a company and I didn't need to reinvent the wheel. I just needed to get there and I wanted to get there faster. And so why not hire people that have already seen many different facets of business and take a look at it and a snap of fingers say, well, Joy, you need this, this, and this. I still have to do the work. I still have to show sure. up. I have a lot of things I have to do. My to-do list is never ending. But at the very minimum, I know I'm going in the right direction. I'm not going to Illinois and then I'm stopping off in like, you know, Atlanta. I'm going to Illinois in the straightest possible direction and route that I can. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I, th I do think it's just, I think it's a mental block. I think people need to get over because like I said, I do think it's to some degree, it's people don't want to admit that they need help because somehow, and uh, you know, they think it reflects on them, whatever, when 
in fact, it really reflects on you very differently. I think most people, if they, if they heard, oh, you have an executive coach who's helping you progress with your career and you're getting, they'd be like, oh, that's pretty smart. I think it shows that you want more, you know, mm -hmm. and when people criticize that, I think it, they're almost speaking from a place of fear because they're like, wow, you've been able to activate around that, but I have not. Yeah. And that's what I was going to say to you earlier. I think what's obviously from what you do, it comes from a place of abundance, right? Because if you, if you look at the world with an abundant mindset and you say there's, there's opportunity for everybody, every, therefore, then you can bring people in, you can empower them. And for you, it's, it's paying forward and it's allowing other people access the abundance as opposed to saying, well, I better keep everybody out because I need to hold on to this pie. It's well, and it's, it's role modeling this behavior. Mm -hmm. You know, I still invest in myself a ton and I think I'm role modeling that behavior for other people. It's normalizing it. And I think, you know, to go back to our earlier point, why a lot of people don't do it. They've never seen anybody else do that. Yeah. I've never seen my parents hire a coach for anything. You know what I mean? Like the only time you ever heard coach is when people were engaged in sports and I was an Indian kid, so I didn't do sports. You know what I mean? So like, it was really something I had to cultivate for myself and now I'm role modeling it for others. Yeah, and, and I think that's the, the, the last point I just wanted to focus in on the whole idea of role modeling, because I do think that that is so critically important and not, to, and not in work, just in work, but in the world today, because, you know, we live in a world today where, where there's a lot of people shouting at each other and, uh, and all of that. And I was thinking, like, oh, you, you mean know, like have Tuesday you ever, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I'm just saying like, you know, have you ever have, and, it, and this is not a political point on any yeah. side, I'm just saying, but have you ever heard, have you ever seen anybody's mind being changed by somebody shouting at them and calling them stupid, right? I mean, you know, it's like if, um, no, what changes people's minds is when you, when they see you acting out in a way that they think, wow, that's very positive, or that's what I want to be like, or whatever. It's, it's, again, it goes back to role modeling. And I wish more people would sort of, instead of shouting at other people, look at themselves and say, okay, well, how can I be the best role model I can be? You know, and I did a little video uh, because I teach a master class on public speaking on Wednesdays. And I was like, well, I need to always figure out how I'm fitting into the larger cultural narrative. And mm -hmm. I'm, I think we as women have plenty of situations where we've been in a meeting and we're just we're just getting railroaded. Like we, there's no entry point for us to be heard. And so I shared like three pieces of language that I learned from a speaker who had come through Lady Drink. She wrote a book called The Myth of the Nice Girl. And so the next time you're in a meeting and you just can't find that you're getting a word in, you can say, you know, that reminds me of a time when, or following up on that, or, you know, thank you for sharing, but my perspective, you know, just sometimes having those pieces of language in your holster and being able to deploy that in real time is the armaments that you need to be able to be heard. Yeah, no, I think that's a fantastic piece of advice. And as you say, I mean, a lot of these are, are simple. It doesn't mean they're easy because simple doesn't always equate to easy, but there's a lot of simple things that, and, and it sounds like this is a lot of the things that, uh, that your organization helps people with, which I think is fantastic. Listen, uh, Joya, this has been great. Um, I really enjoyed this conversation. All of Joya's information and the information about Lady Drinks will be in the contributor bio, but please, before we go, tell people a little bit more about yourself and the organization, how they can find out more. Absolutely. You can find me on social media at Joya Das, J-O-Y-A-D-A-S-S. -S. If you'd like to get on my newsletter, all you have to do is text Joya Das to 44222. Um, or you can find me on Instagram under Joya Das as well. My website is ladydrinks.com and you can always email me at info at ladydrinks.com. So that's four ways that you can get in touch with me. Absolutely. And ladydrinks.com, that's not going to be hard to, um, not, it's hard to remember. So well. yeah. and, I would, and I would definitely advise people to check it out and especially, um, you know, the women watching in, um, I think, uh, there's no doubt that we we need so much more diversity in all areas in in everything today. So I mean, yes, get invest in yourself. That's all. I'm, that's what I'm saying. Absolutely, I'm teaching a public speaking masterclass because people have been asking for it. So I'm finally mm -hmm. doing it, and um, so I I happily encourage people to email me and see if you can enter in the class. I'm happy to teach you. Absolutely, that's fantastic. Uh, my name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, Pipeline of CRM. See you all for another expert interview really soon. Thank you. Yeah.